Welcome to the second part of the series looking at colour modulation. If you haven't checked out the first video, have a look at it before this one. Let's uh, crack on and finish this M3 Lee. Okay, chipping, what is it? It's meant to represent uh, extreme wear to the vehicle where the actual camouflage paint wears away either to a primer or through to the bare steel underneath. And um, when this modulation technique came about, there was like a lot of hype about chipping and about the colors and about the bases. And um, even today as well, it seems to be a bit of a benchmark by, you know, for some modelers to think that weathering is the greatest if it's massively chipped. Or you might take the other stance, whereas uh, in reality, a lot of vehicles just do not have that appearance. Regardless, we are gonna do it on this one. 
It's just part of this modulation technique. And also we'll be going to use the traditional sort of chipping colours. So we're going to use uh, black brown as the steel colour. We're going to use the good old Iraqi sand, which is a massive contrast. Might even use some medium grey. So we're going to use acrylics and the method of application we use sponge. Sponge is quick, easy and provides very, very small chips. Also we use a fine brush as well in some areas. We can create some interesting areas of extreme wear on the vehicle. Now, um, straight away, some of you will be saying, hold on, it's an olive drab M3 Lee. Um, the paint finish was baked on and they didn't really chip. And if you're saying that, you're absolutely right, yeah. Um, that's where this color modulation technique sort of falls on its knees a little bit because it doesn't, it ignores historical aspects or reality. Now, um, that creates visual interest, so it's interesting uh, to look at, but, um, the other thing as well is that on German vehicles, German vehicles de facto sort of weathering style seems to be massively chipping them down. And they say that they look realistic like that because apparently all oh, German vehicle paint was terrible, 4BO the same. I disagree <laughs> with these sort of terms and principles from my own experience in the, in the military and seeing lots of vehicles as well. But we're going to use this method anyways. And it will be interesting as well because we're going to be able to well, as you can see later, you'll see the effect it has on the heavily highlighted areas. That's going to concentrate our chipping. Chipping needs to be applied in a um, stereotypically around the edges to create wear. Now, a lot of models say, oh, it's where the crew points are accessed. Everybody who says that, they're usually not doing that. They're doing it everywhere. And that's basically what we're going to do. So let's crack on with it.
Okay, the chipping's done. It took about, uh, even though it was a very short clip, that took about six hours to do. Uh, once I got into the mode of doing that, I really enjoy actually that process. Put on some music and just get into the flow of it. The thing really, I mean, the key to it is keeping your chips very, very small, like microscopic really, and then building up slowly. So maybe from this distance, you can't see them, but as you move in, you can see the effect uh, very much at that uh, macro level. Um, now, yeah, I did say, yeah, very unlikely uh, that these sort of vehicles were chipped in that manner. However, I've sort of kept to a light color as if the paint's more scratched. It's the way I like to do things. I suppose if I've really kept true to the nature of the DVD, there would have been bigger chips and you would have seen a lot more rust on it. But that's basically the way that I paint them. It's just my take on it. Um, well, regardless, anyways, we're nearly at the end. There's only one more process. If we keep to the original DVD, the final process is application of dust by airbrush. And I'll explain that now. Okay, yeah, so the final process is application of dust using an airbrush, a fine airbrush, low pressure. Um, Tamiya paints again, Boff, Earth, and my favorite, Dictan. Yeah, my, still my favorite. I still like this technique a lot for applying dust, but we have to be very controlled in the application. It needs to be very dilute, low, low pressure, and also, in particular, we're gonna use a mask again, because it's, um, again, a controlled application, and we'll sort of blend out some of these higher contrasted areas and see how it looks, and then we'll, uh, we'll be able, maybe to wrap up, or maybe add some more effects. Haven't decided yet. Okay, so basically at this juncture, we've completed the steps that are within the DVD, but that isn't everything, as far as I'm concerned anyways, okay? Anyways, those dust tones are basically, again, they've taken away some of the harshness of some of the contrast, uh, looking quite good at the moment, but I want to add some more. Um, when they brought out the DVD, they missed out some stuff, for sure, definitely. And um, the things, I mean, even at this stage now, there's, there's things I want to do, but I want to keep true the color modulation one of them definitely is pigments okay because they actually brought out a separate dvd on pigments and that's why they didn't include it inside this one so we're going to add some pigments just very very light little touches uh, just to blend in these environmental effects the other thing we're going to do is because we've got chipping we've, we're going to add in the most subtle rust streaking not overall i've seen these guys who like just coat the things with rust. Um, instead, we've got very specific chips in very specific areas, so we'll add just a touch of rust just in those specific areas. The other thing we're gonna go and do is add a little bit of metallic effects. Then I think we can wrap it up. We can talk all about, you know, what we think about the end result.
Okay, with those final steps concluded, what result? Okay, what do you guys think? Anyways, what do I think as well? Okay, I'm actually surprised about the end result, um, about quite a few things, first of all. Um, the things that I was most concerned about, i.e. the bright highlighting, actually hasn't turned out as bad as I thought it was going to do, but I still think we could improve that as well. Um, also, remember that color modulation, I try to keep to the purest form of it, so we didn't really um, try to blend out entirely. We wanted to get this highly contrasted look, and really, I've achieved that. So, in terms of color modulation, great. Um, what else can we say as well? The things that um, I, I, I'm, I'm not liking too much actually is the very dark shades but you can do color modulation in other ways this is dark um base tone light but you could go uh base tone light and lighter there's so many different variations uh will i be doing this again yes i will i will definitely be doing this again but i'll do my own take on it anyways it's been a worthwhile exercise but uh, now i'm going to talk about um some pros and cons of the technique Okay, let's talk about uh, some pros first. We'll mix it up a little bit. Why would anybody use this technique? Uh, well, to be honest, it is actually a competition winner. Um, certainly, in terms of visual appearance, if you look, if you've got a competitions and you have a, a, a lots of models in front of you, the ones that have got the higher contrast will stick out to you much more. They'll immediately draw your eye to them, and that technique certainly works in terms of high contrast and it's used by award-winning modelists. Also, uh, myself, I've judged at an international level and judges do not look at color accuracy. Um, they look at how well the paint is applied and how well the gradients are done. And I've heard this being quoted, not by myself, but by top level modelers, top level judges. So in terms of that, in, in creating that visual contrast appearance, Color modulation certainly does fulfill that. So let's put that down as a plus for color modulation. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about uh, well, a negative for me. A negative is, if we go right back to the first video, we talked about this zenithal lighting concept. In terms of that zenithal lighting, I think this really falls on its knees and I'll tell you why, basically. That technique is absolutely perfect for figures because you view figures face on and you look at the uh, shadows around the face, the highlights of the face. When you look at a tank, you can move it around uh, and manipulate it, okay? So that's one aspect. But this is the one that really sticks out for me. Have you noticed that aircraft modelers don't do this? Ship modelers don't do this? I've never seen a car modeler use color modulation, de facto xenonthal lighting. But if we sort of expand it into what it sort of represents, shadow, dark, those sort of elements are used commonly, okay? But in terms of it being a highlight technique, I just don't agree in that sort of principle because we can move around the model, we can look at it in different angles. However, the effects of highlight and shading, I think, are positive. Okay, so I've mentioned that it might be, uh, you know, a plus for competition type models. But uh, also I want to say like why it's not a technique I use a lot or often. And basically I find it to be um, process based. Instead of uh, going through what I would like to do, what I like to do is use references and come up with my own plan of creating my weathering, um, you know, following photographs, etc. But color modulation technique is just a series of techniques. You need to take a, a couple of steps. So you don't go into researching because when you apply color modulation, immediately you're going to have a contrasted model. And maybe the references you have aren't as contrasty. So in terms, in terms of that, that's, that's why I don't really follow it. I like and I really enjoy using references for my modeling. Uh, the other thing is also the, the harsh contrast. Somebody said it was um, cartoon-like, and I, I sort of definitely agree with that. Now, that doesn't make it a bad thing or a good thing. It's just the sort of visual appearance tends to be like that. The, the real test as well to me is if you put models in front of um, basically a non-model and you ask them to judge them, 
quite a few norm models will say like why does that one look so dark and light in that unnatural way so it, it is quite obvious to sort of norm modelers that it is a um, very artificial technique okay finally i just want to just talk about contrasting to other styles okay um which one's better the which one's better question cannot be answered it's far too subjective it's what you like so some people are immediately going to like color modulation because of its visual attraction and that's great as well i mean why does everything have to look the same i've ranted on on quite a few videos about you know uh, following references and realism etc being my preferential style but now actually after undertaking a full color modulation exercise i start to sort of more see the sort of fun side of things because i did mention as well it's process based and what's wrong with that basically uh, go back and just take a project forget about references paint it in a more artistic surrealistic manner and just enjoy the process so this what is better sort of argument doesn't come into it and then on the other hand as well if you look at maybe you know other styles that i like to do which is research and finally detailed and referenced etc that can be equally as enjoyable so um, i can't really answer the question what is better that is your own viewpoint and also i suppose if you put it in front of judges as well a lot of them in the european competitions i don't know about the us they will go for the higher contrast um, style of modeling as long as it's carried out well and i think that's the main point as well if you've got experience and you build it up and you know how to mod how to carry out weathering to uh you know a high degree of um end results I think you can do whatever you like. Um, I've certainly enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed the series anyways on this color modulation, regardless of you know what you prefer or don't prefer. Now, what I'd like to know as well, is it worthwhile doing something similar in the future? Because um, I'm always keen to explore new areas. What I'm thinking about trying is a style that might be in between beginner, intermediate, uh, and a style that might give you a quick, but very effective end result. The other thing I'm thinking about is going back to old school. Um, what came before color, color modulation, what became after it, we can explore all those areas. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. This is the bear and I'm out of here.